All right, I'm gonna start installing the rugged radio kit in my son's 2020 YXZ 1000. Um, this is a kit I buy from uh, Weller Racing and it's a complete like Weller race, or it's a complete, complete kit for the YXZ. Um, there's a few options you can get with it, um, like the helmet kits or you can get headsets uh, or I don't know, for, I don't know what the other options are. I, I guess there's maybe you can get like a two seat or four seat version. Obviously the four seat version doesn't uh, apply to the Yamaha YXZ. But uh, anyways, I don't use um, this magnetic mount. Uh, it's, I guess it's something if you have like a metal roof or something, some flat surface, uh, I don't use that. Uh, I do use pretty much everything else. It comes with, uh, I guess one of these long antennas but I just uh, got a set of these uh, for different cars. So here it is on Brooklyn's. It's just a little bitty, like stubby antenna. And apparently it abbreviates your range a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. If not, we can just put on the long one if needed. But anyways, got some dash plates, of course the intercom and the radio. This is their new like digital radio. We use it. Um, it's got an active filter. It's kind of a, Kind of a block that uh, goes in line with the power wire or maybe one of the communication wires i'm not sure but anyways ground strap a few things same kit that's in brooklyn's car so this is what it looks like when it's done um little plate that fits the radio in the intercom and then uh we i use the push to talk buttons on the steering wheel and then one over there on the passenger handle and then i always just leave these um, loose and rugged's real good about having everything you know labeled very clearly for what's driver and what's passenger things like that so it's really nice um nice kit uh one thing i'm going to do over here on carter's car now is it basically occupies that entire pocket and in order to get wires in and out of there and to make it easy i don't ride in mud or really water at all hardly very rarely get some level of moisture so i just basically cut the back of this box off um it's probably not a good idea it leaves the back of the radio and everything exposed but it is fairly concealed i guess you know and, and behind all these plastics you kind of have to look way up there to kind of see the back of it but that's what it looks like on brooklyn's car i don't know if you can see in there or not but um, I'm prob I might leave a little more uh, of the plastic on it, you know, so it's kind of somewhat hooded, but probably not. I don't know. I'll see. I'm just going to use a, I just have like a Milwaukee uh, vibrating, oscillating cutoff saw. Um, makes it real easy. Cuts like butter. And then um, I'll start running some wires and things. So I'll be back after I get that cut. There it is. Real simple, real easy, cuts like butter. See right through. So here's the, uh, the kit. I started kind of unboxing some things. Um, basically, this is a uh, active filter. Um, it goes back there. What I'm gonna do is gonna unbox the, the, the intercom and the radio here and I assemble the, the 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 parts on the on the desk here on the bench here before I go mount it and then start running the wires rugged is great because everything's neatly packaged you hear me you heard me go on and on about like the Baja design stuff is the same way neatly packaged well organized clearly labeled um, and it's just a great company to do business with. Uh, I think their products are pretty good. I, th I think there's good competition in the market for other radio and communication products like PCI and things, but what really sets Rugged apart is their service. They are absolutely on board with getting their customers um, taken care of as fast as possible. Um, I've called them before needed a part from like an old model, something that was kind of obscure. And like the tech support person, it was a lady, I forget her name. 
she she goes and like searches the building for an old uh, handset or something like that for me. She finds it, she bench tests it, all while I'm on the phone with her, and gets my information and sends it to me for like half price because it was kind of an old thing. So, um, and she sent it to me like pretty quick. I had it within I think two days before my ride for sure. So they're very they're very good customer service things like that. Big clear instructions in the box, um, manuals, things like that. Uh, very clear. This is great, nice, and um, uh, um, colorful and very uh, very informative information in the boxes. So that's all very nice. So. I'm gonna try to keep separated, like left and right, you know, what comes in what box. Um, don't think I use this. No, I don't use this. I don't use this. Oh, shoot. I would've used this in the RMAX if I knew that that existed. Magnetic mount. Oh, well. Um, okay. So for this kit, if I'm not mistaken, you don't use, right, you don't use these brackets because this radio, or excuse me, this is the intercom, the intercom slides through and the mounts with the nuts directly onto the side there, and then the radio. Uh, does the same thing. These mount directly on this side here, these, this this bracket. So um, you don't use those brackets that, that they come with. Uh, they, they mount with this Yamaha YXZ specific mounting plate. And then this one goes on top of that to fill the hole. So I'm going to assemble all this and then come back. All right, so I assembled this, um, and just some few notes here. It's just, uh, I think it's all metric. I used seven millimeter on these, and you'll notice you only mount the front ones, the back ones I just left in there. And then this uh, other nut down there is a 10 millimeter. Uh, but there's only one, so that feels, that feels like it's a little weak. Maybe it'll bounce around, I don't know. It's okay, I think. Um, and then these little Allens up front are, a 2.5 millimeter I think and then um, it only came with four screws that I believe are supposed to be used to mount this to the plastic in the dashboard so there's six holes so I'm gonna have to find some more matching screws or something I don't know uh, I also noticed that th this is different than the one I got just last year so the one here in Brooklyn's car You'll notice is one piece for the dash, um, as opposed to this one is two. It's like it uses a universal plate and then like a adapter for the YXZ to mount them. And the radio is slightly different. Hard to tell side by side, but um, it is slightly different. One thing in particular is the top says rugged. And the way this mounting plate works, you can kind of see like the bent tabs and stuff that go back for the for this adapter. I don't know, I, I, it doesn't look as refined to me. I don't like it whenever it does that. Um, I think that looks a little better, but to be honest, neither one of them are great because you can tell that's like, the radio doesn't really fit the hole. It's, it's just kind of necked down to fit into that. So whatever, it's small, small cookies, nothing real major here. Um, I'm just happy that they actually have a plate that fix the YXZ instead of having to mount it, you know, build some custom mount. So, seems like everything in the world is made for Can-Am and Polaris. And then um, sometimes you're working on something, you know, maybe a little less popular, like the Yamaha or the Wildcat or whatever. And sometimes these manufacturers don't support these, these, these other brands. 
So with that hole cut open back here, obviously it makes the wiring much easier and you can basically do it after the fact. Um, I might thread that antenna. I might thread, use this one up here to thread that antenna on. I might go ahead and do that before I mount it. Um, but it makes it very convenient to get to. Uh, Rugged actually makes an accessory. It's, it's a sock that will fit over the back of the radio and the intercom. And it and it's just it's just like a fabric. I don't know if it's like canvas or something, but it's a bag that attaches to the back of the radio and the uh, intercom. And then it, it kind of necks down and and has some strain relief as well as protection uh, for all the cabling and things. So um, I'm just going to mount that there. I'm going to use those supplied screws and I might have to go find some others. Yamaha Yamaha has these little indentations in the dashboard. I don't know what they're for, but they're there. And um, Rugged's plate lines up with those, so that's nice that you can kind of use those to thread your screws and get it lined up right there. But um, anyways, that's, that's kind of cool. And then, so I'm going to mount that. I'm going to go ahead and wire in. This is the uh, active filter. This is a nice piece to have if you ever have interference or charging wine or anything like that in your in your headsets or your uh, helmet sets. The um, this thing helps with that, and so it's just ground. And you also have to run you only run one power wire, the same power wire that comes with your uh, that comes with your what is that? I guess that's the radio it comes with the bigger power line. This one. So you run this and it goes into this active filter. And then the active filter actually has a pigtail that supplies power to both the intercom and the radio. So you don't have to run a second wire to the intercom. It's just one. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount this back here somewhere. I don't know, maybe on the side or on top. And then uh, run that power wire and go ahead and start, I'll start running the headset wires and the push to talk buttons as well. Um, what else? I guess that's it for now. I'm going to start running wire. So I've done the wiring for the radio and uh, some other things. I went ahead and put on the front, uh, the front plastic pieces here so that you can see that we still have pretty good access. If you just pop off this one hood piece, you have good access here. Of course, like I said, the drawback is that it's pretty exposed but um this is nice serviceable access i basically just run the wires up the factory snake harness you can see there i even use some of the factory zip ties uh right there as it goes up through the console through here uh the red and black wire is the power wire for the radio it goes there um the push to talk for the passenger, I kind of run through here and, and I actually take it through a panel, um, like you'll see over here on Brooklyn's car. This is the way it ends up. Uh, is I just kind of squeeze it through a pair of the panels. Uh, I could drill a hole, you know, or something to make it go through there. I could um, do, do a few different things, but I decide just to kind of squeeze it through the corner of those panels. I don't think it looks too bad. So, and then for the driver's side, I'll show you here on Brooklyn's. Um, the coil is designed to kind of hang loose so that you can spin your wheel around and things. So I just kind of dip it under and, and uh, I kind of tie a loop with Velcro strap around the steering wheel. So I have not put the Velcro loop on Carter's car yet, but you see it kind of the same deal. It zip tie to a factory harness up here, and um, it goes through. Let's see, there's a hole right there. So I just added a zip tie to a factory harness and went through a factory hole. It's like a rubber grommet. Um, at the steering column it comes through i don't know down there it's not very it's not very far and then just just kind of zip tie it to this frame bar um i did something different with the headset wires i actually 
routed them down and under the car. Um, so they come out and they go down. Let's see. Here you can kind of see back there. Um, so, so I'm trying to get my hand in there. So these wires here, and they kind of go down. And uh, there's a small harness that kind of follows the drivetrain um, on one side, on the far side. And then I go up where the seats, um, where the seat belt goes up. Yeah. So there's a gap right there. And, um, so these harnesses for the headsets come up. This is where the factory seat belt came up. Um, so as long as it's nice and tied and you, you don't have any loose wire hanging underneath the car, I think this will work pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'll, I just drape it over the, over the seats, you know, like this whenever it's done. But uh, as long as it's tied up under the car, you know, it's concealed by your skid plate. So it shouldn't be getting ripped and grabbed or anything. There's other factory wiring under there. I just try to make it a point to follow the factory harnesses and in, in, in secure it accordingly. So uh, that's going to be it. I, I, so I did fasten the, the, the plate as well. I did use six screws. Uh, four of them are the same and then two of them are like slightly bigger. You can't tell though, because the heads are all the same, but, uh, or at least they're similar. And then the, um, um, that's it. I'm just, I'm going to test it after I, I, I do, like I'll put my seats in and then I'll put in the rest of the electronics. I still have a switch pros that I need to install for switching everything. The rugged radios and intercom setup is something that I power directly to the battery. I do not switch it. Um, that's per the recommendation from Rugged Radios, as well as um, others. You, you just don't want to put it on a switch. If you use the Bluetooth memory, I believe that's one of the reasons. Uh, or um, also if it's switched, uh, I'm trying to think. I thought there was some other drawback. I, know, I can't remember. But um, anyway, so I just tie these directly to the battery, positive or negative, it's very simple. Um, and when I, when I wire up the lights and everything, I'll do a different video for that. That's what all these wires are. That's for, you know, light bar. I got mirror lights, uh, I've got halo lights, accent lights, whip lights, stuff like that. All of those will go through the switch, through the switch pros. But, um, so I'll test all that once I have that wired up and um, that's it for the rugged radios.